Kimmel CDs Part 2. Hi everybody and welcome to the next video looking at my general music CDs the stuff that goes in that big empty bit up there so these are just normal albums greatest hits live albums and just general albums that artists have released uh, as I mentioned at the start of part one they used to be in alphabetical order they're not anymore if you want to know why watch part one um, let's just get cracking I'm not going into too much detail on these because I want to get through them quite quickly uh, this is Joni Mitchell's Song to a Seagull Gradually picking up all Joni stuff on either CD or vinyl or both in a couple of cases. I should have done that before I started. Um, but this is one of her earlier albums. I think it's her second album. But yeah, I just really like Joni Mitchell. She's an artist like many who I discovered through Prince because she was one of his favourite artists. Uh, this is John Parrish and Polly Jean Harvey's Dance Hall at Louse Point. Uh, Polly Jean, PJ Harvey huge fan of have been throughout her career uh john parish long-term band member and collaborator and um, this is an album they did in 1996 and it's really really good now the joni mitchell this is ladies of a canyon again this is an early album of hers oh uh, it's got big yellow taxi on and woodstock one of the greatest albums ever made, Joni Mitchell's Blue. Also have this on vinyl. Every track just amazing on this. And Cause and Spark. Uh, also have this on vinyl. Another great, great album. The Hissing of Summer Lawns. A very different style to the other albums, also the earlier albums. It's more jazzy, but really good. Still on Joni, this is both sides now. This was a re recording of loads of her songs with an orchestra. The version, if you've seen Love Actually, um, the version of both sides now that Emma Thompson listened to when she's crying is from this album. Uh, another big favourite of mine is Joss Stone. This is her debut album that really launched her. This is the Soul Sessions. So this is her versions of various cover versions of various. Largely soul classics. Uh, this is Mind, Body and Soul. I think this is their second album. Uh, some more really good stuff on here. This is Introducing Just Stone. Again, just, I mean, I can, I can just, I love her voice so much I can listen to anything which she does. Some of her later albums, is a, it was quite, quite a lot of filler. But there's always some really good stuff on. Uh, this is Colour Me Free, which is an album she released herself. Uh, yeah, again, as I say, you know, fair bit of filler, but some good bits on there. Really like Kaiser Chiefs. This is their debut album, Employment. Up you to riot, modern way, every day I love you less and less. Na 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 na. Oh my god. What can you say? Classic, classic songs. Uh, this is Yours Truly, Angry, Angry Mob. It's got Ruby, The Angry Mob. Uh, everything is average nowadays. This is Off With Their Heads. Um, Never Miss a Beat. It was excellent on this. That's the only one actually that leaps out. This is The Future is Medieval. This, as you can see, so this section hasn't moved much from when it was in alphabetical order. Um, this was a strange album because they just sort of bunged out a load of tracks and you could compile your own version of the album. And then we, after that, they sort of released this version with what they considered to be the album. So, most peculiar. Uh, I don't remember much about the album. I think I've only listened to it once. Not their best. It's Kate Bush, Red Shoes. This is the only Kate Bush I've got. Um, her voice put me off her when I was younger, particularly Wuthering Heights. 
um, the high falsetto. So I never really got into her, but I intend picking up the box sets of her, of her latest reissues at some point because I think I, sh I will get into her if that makes sense. Um, and I'm sorry, I just realised I was looking at the screen rather than the camera. Uh, apologies for that. But I've got this album because it contains um, And So Is Love, which Prince is on. But I enjoyed this album, by and large. So yeah, I think I will get into Kate Bush. And Kate I really am into is Kate Nash. Uh, I've seen her live twice. I'm going again on the 1st of August, which will be around the time this video is going up, I would imagine. Um, this is her debut album, Made of Bricks. I have all these on vinyl as well. Uh, this was sort of the one that launched her. She's got Foundations on it, which of course was a number two single. She won the Brit Awards for Best uh, British Female off the back of this album. Uh, this has also got Mouthwash and Pumpkin Soup and Merry Happy with the singles from this. Just excellent, excellent album, as all hers are. This is her second album, My Best Friend Is You. Uh, didn't do quite as well, but Kiss That Girl and Do What Do was it. And later on, the singles, Do What Do was quite a big hit. And then she stopped having hits, but has released two more excellent albums, both of which have been crowdfunded. Uh, this is Girl Talk. I also have an empty case of this that is signed in my signed CD, so you would have seen that. But there's some, just some really good stuff on here. And then her fourth album, uh, whose name has literally just gone out of my head. Pop it on the screen. Um, again, was kickstarted, and I got that on vinyl, signed vinyl, signed CD. And various other bits when I ordered that poster and t-shirt and that's an excellent album as well I'm just bugged that I can't remember what it's called in fact I'm so annoyed oh. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put it on the screen I'm gonna look it up because I'm have have exclusively on my iPod at the moment in order to Uh, yesterday was forever. Of course, it's yesterday was forever. Um, was it a bone up ready for the concert? Yes. Anyway, so that's Kate Nash. Uh, next up, we have Hopes and Fears, Keen's debut album. Like Keen, not a huge fan, but I like Keen. Saw Tom Chaplin, the lead singer, doing a concert uh, with the BBC Two Friday Night His Music Night Orchestra doing Queen songs and his voice was amazing so I've sort of got a bit more into Keen since then but I bought this at the time it was released Hopes and Fears definitely their probably well <laughs> definitely probably in my opinion their best album it's just got the stuff you know on it you know somewhere only we know everybody's changing uh, this is the last time bed shaped uh, but I have picked up a couple more of theirs from charity shops which are in those shelves there this is Kimberly Walsh's Centre Stage. Uh, this came with a little... S I bought this signed and I'm trying to remember what the signed bit is because it was either, it must have been either a little signed postcard or they sent to sometimes when you order signed stuff rather than signing the CD booklet that's with it they send a separate signed CD booklet in which case they're stored in my folders. So it's either that or it was a signed a po little postcard or something with this. But yeah, this is her doing songs from musicals. Kimberly Walsh from Girls Aloud, of course. It's good. It's not great. It's good. Uh, this is Kinks, The Ultimate Collection. So this is a two CD best of of the Kinks. Uh, I intend getting more Kinks. I will pick their, probably on vinyl, pick their bits up as and when I find them at an acceptable price to me. But yeah, really like the Kinks. Uh, I really like Cooler Shaker. This is her debut album, K. This is an amazing album. Height of Britpop, of course. Came into a lot of stick because it's got uh, swastika on the cover, but they were using it in its original Indian meaning. Um, but I mean, Tatva and Hey Dude and Govinda and Into the D are just such a good album. This is their second album, Peasants, Pigs and Astronauts. Uh, it's got some good stuff on here as well. 
Shower Your Love in particular. This is their third album, Pilgrim's Progress. It's a good album. There's no hits from it. Um, but it is a good album. Okay, this one could have been in with my soundtracks and compilations. I've kept it in, even though it is a cast recording. Um, well, I'll show you. it's the London cast recording of the musical of Andy Cap. Now, all the music was written and by Alan Price, who I'm a big fan of, uh, formerly of the Animals, and he went solo. He does appear on this cast recording as well, so I've kept it with my normal CDs because I got it because it's an Alan Price album, basically. Just a lot of the tracks are sung by other people, but yeah, uh, really good musical, some good stuff on here. Um, yeah. Really liked that. This is Good Evening New York City, Paul McCartney's live album from somewhere. No, can't find a date on it. Mid noughties, I will say. Uh, it's a nice little package. It's got the full show on two CDs, but then it's also got it on DVD as well. So that was a no brainer to pick up. It's a good set list, nice mixture of solo and Beatles on there. Uh, as I mentioned on, was it on this video? I've on this video or the previous one. Uh, big fan of PJ Harvey. So I have all her albums. So this is her first album, Rid of, no this isn't her first album, this is her second album, Rid of Me. Why aren't they in order? Um, I really like the album, but I don't like the production on it. It's far too quiet. Uh, it's produced by Steve Albini, and I don't think he did a very good job, in my opinion. It's got some great songs, but I don't like the production on it. So therefore, I prefer Four Track Demos, which was the album she released, sort of in between her second and third album, which is the demos from Rid of Me, plus some other tracks. They're still demos, but that weren't on the album. And I much prefer this to Rid of Me, personally. That's for track listing. Uh, this is one of my all-time favourite albums. This is Wanderlust by Sophie Ellis Bexter. This is in my top 10 albums of all time. I just absolutely love this album. Uh, very much changing direction of her musically, but I love her voice anyway. And this has sort of got an Eastern European folky type theme, if you like. Oh, first time I put this, I did mention this when I did my top 10 albums, but um, first time I put this on, I was about halfway through and I said to myself, this is going straight back on. I listened to it three or four times in a row. First time I bought, I listened to it. I absolutely loved it. I don't think I've ever put it on and not played it at least twice. I just love that album. Uh, back to PJ. This is Letting and Shake. Uh, this was the album she won her second Mercury Prize for. Really good album, uh, all about war, basically. But yeah, just really, really good. Oh, Polly stuff's really good. Uh, when I get to them, I'll show you. I'll tell you which two albums are my least favourite, but they're all still really good. Uh, got a lot of Miles Davis, another artist I've been introduced to through Prince. This is Blue Haze which uh, it's a compilation, I think. I don't really know much about it, but I picked it up quite cheap. Um, but if it is a compilation, it's, they haven't picked, you know, of his well-known tracks. But all Miles' stuff is good to listen to. Uh, so this is one of my two least favourite. I'll do a proper ranking of them at some point, I'm sure. But PJ Harvey albums. This is uh, White Chalk. Uh, it's very mean and moody, this one. It's largely piano-based, which nothing wrong with, but I like... Certainly my favourite PJ Harvey stuff is this sort of a guitar-based stuff. Um, I say it's still a great album, but it's one of my least favourite Polly ones. This is uh, another one she did with John Parrish. This is A Woman A Man Walked By. Uh, I didn't like this as much as Dance Hall at Louse Point, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, this is PJ Harvey, The Peel Sessions, 91 to 2004. So this is just 12 tracks that she did on the John Peel show. 
it's, it's all sort of my favourite period of PJ Harvey, so I've really enjoyed that. Uh, this is my other least favourite PJ Harvey track, which is actually, having said that about white chalk, um, that's white chalk, isn't it? Brain's gone dead. Yeah. This is a lot more guitar-y, but um, it's still one of my two least favourites. That's, you know, again, that said, it's an excellent album. This is a ha ha. Um, it has got some really good stuff on it. It just overall doesn't quite grab me as much as the other albums. This is the album that she got her first Mercury Music Prize Award for Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea. It's a lot more poppy than her other stuff. Um, it was definitely an attempt to be a bit more commercial. But that said, it's still very much PJ Harvey. Uh, it's, because it's more poppy, it's a really enjoyable listen. This is Isby's Desire. Uh, this, this is down there. It's probably my third least favourite one. But again, it's got some really good stuff on here. Um, and it's a perfect day at least. It's probably a, one of our best singles, in my opinion. Probably my favourite of our albums is To Bring You My Love. Uh, this is a two CD version with all the B-sides from the era on it as well. Probably it's an HMV in Cardiff, I remember. But yeah, my favourite PJ Harvey album. Uh, i trying to think why Dry isn't... Yeah, I'm sure Dry's in here somewhere. Um, that will be 16 minutes. I'm going to leave that one here. That means we'll get one more part out of this shelf so that'll do nicely uh thank you for watching like comment subscribe and i'll see you in another video thanks bye